This episode of Author Stories is brought to you by the Writing Mastery Academy. Founded by Jessica Brody, author of the best-selling plotting guide, Save the Cat Writes a Novel. The Writing Mastery Academy features online, on-demand writing courses, including the official Save the Cat Writes a Novel companion course. Novel fast drafting, crafting dynamic characters, and productivity hacks for writers to name just a few, plus monthly live webinars on various writing topics. Go to jessicabrody.com slash hank to learn more and get your first month of unlimited access to all the content for just $6. That's right, just $6. jessicabrody.com slash hank. You're listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Bringing you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Margaret Wine, Terry Brooks, Sheena Kamal, Matthew Quick, JT Ellison, Walt D. Williams, Brad Ford, Corey, Dr. O, Brandon Sanders, Robin Mom, Ernest Klein, Jim Butcher, Sherwin Harris. Visit HankGarner.com for archives of all the shows. Today's guest is. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I'm really excited to have Dr. Gabby Wild on the show with me today. She has an amazing new book uh, uh, that is out today when we're recording this. It's her uh, book birthday, and I know this is something that you're all really going to love. It's called Wild Vet Adventures, Saving Animals Around the World with Dr. Gabby Wild, and it's published uh, by National Geographic, our friends over at National Geographic. Uh, Welcome to the show, Dr. Gabby. Thank you so much. Dr. Gabby, we begin each show with the same question, and that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer or storyteller, or uh, or, or what is your first memory of, of wanting to collect your stories and share with the world? Oh, wow, what a beautiful question. So the first part is finding your passion and what you like to write about. And I remember that when I was a little girl, I've always loved animals and I knew I always wanted to be a wildlife veterinarian. And I remember the first little story that I wrote on my big desktop computer using my little fingers, my index fingers, I didn't know how to type yet, was a a story called The Animal Tea Party. And I still don't even remember what it was about. (laughs) But that's what I, I wrote about. And I think that had always been the underlying love is writing about animals and the experience of them. So you are a wildlife veterinarian. Um, how, what is a wildlife veterinarian and how does your work differ from our family veterinarians that, that we take, you know, the family dog or cat to go see? Um, w- what does your work entail? Great question. So it's not too different from them in the sense that I, I have patients too and I allot time to see them. But the big difference is our training and then the experience with those patients and the species we work with. So, you know, you typically will take your dog or cat to the vet. Um, sometimes they even come to you if you're in a fancy area or sure. if you have a, a horse or a, a cow that your vet comes to you. Um, they are usually well behaved, not all the time, but they're usually well behaved. Your vet will examine them. They'll cooperate for the examination. They'll cooperate for their vaccine. Sometimes I'm sure some, sometimes dogs and cats a little bit feisty when they get injections. Um, but then afterwards they go home with you and they live with you. And that's the experience. Additionally, you're giving the vet a history. You're telling them all about your pet how it's eating, how it's going to the bathroom, if it's drinking, whatever, all the details. My situation can be on the flip side. Some of my patients are in zoos, so they have a zookeeper that can tell me everything. Some of my patients are completely wild and I have no idea what happened, how it happened, or any details of how long ago it happened. So I have to do sometimes even more detective work. Um, And then I'm working with a bunch of different species so I have to understand 
their anatomy, their physiology, what medications to give, what not to give, what doses for each species, what um, what type of surgeries I can and cannot perform, what size of instruments I need to be using for them, the suture material. My background is in surgery, so I need to know how to, to close different skin types and work with different types of bones, different fracture repairs on different species are completely different. And when I talk about skin types, you know, when I'm doing a surgery, I have to know how to close reptilian skin versus uh, an intact male cat versus uh, an elephant versus a chimpanzee versus a bird and all of these different varieties in between. So it's a lot of detail and a lot of knowledge that comes with doing wildlife medicine and also knowing that most of my patients want to eat me. So I have to be really <laughs> cautious on how I interact with them. So I often have to provide specialized handling so that they're safe and they're calm and comfortable, or I have to anesthetize them prior to doing my job. That's that's so funny, Dr. Yabby, because, uh, you know, when when we feel ill and we go to the doctor, um, usually we leave the doctor with a, a sense of gratitude and, uh, you know, just thankfulness that that this person with all of his or her um, specialized training has helped us get over uh, something, hopefully. And, and we see the light at the end of the tunnel and and through their uh, their care, uh, we you know, can live a better life. And your patients don't always uh, don't always communicate in the same way or don't always understand uh, what it is that you're trying to do with them uh, or, or for them. Uh, your book, Wild Vet Adventures, um, we know from the cover that this th that there's some stories in here. Um, when did when you first became a veterinarian? And you you had been through all of your training and now you were, you know, kind of on your own, as it were. Um, was there ever a moment where you were like, oh, my goodness, what did I get myself into? This is <laughs> this is going to be a crazy adventure. Absolutely. And honestly, I feel that all the time because every experience is different. And if I'm out in the wild, sometimes the oh, no moments aren't with the animals, but with the situation I might be in. So part of the adventure may literally not just be darting that animal and doing the procedure. For me, the medicine sometimes is, is my easy part. I, I know what I'm doing, but it's sometimes the interactions. So for example, a serious adventure, which I'm just very glad we made out unscathed, was when I traveled to Tanzania to work with some lions and then also do some lion human control. So that way we could mitigate some of the conflicts with some local villages. And I went with the film crew and, and my, my goodness, was it scary? Because when I, we landed, the airport security wouldn't let us leave with our equipment. And they threatened us and wanted $30,000 to get our stuff back. Oh, and, no. and going through those kinds of adventures, of uh, they wouldn't give it back to us. So we couldn't go out to, to the wild and into the bush. So we had to stay overnight in a local location because driving through these areas at night is just unsafe. There's, there are a lot of robberies and let that be the only thing that happens if you get my drift. Right. So, so we said, we're going to stay locally by the airport and we'll reapproach them in the morning and maybe a more sensible person will arrive or well, no sensible people were arriving <laughs> and it was just terrible. And my crew, we were all women and a fabulous driver who is trying so hard to be like this, this macho man to help us and be like, it okay, ladies, it okay. We're like, we're, it's not okay. They have all of my medical equipment and all of this beautiful film equipment. And so long story short, they, they took all of our passports and then they separated me from all of my girls and placed me as their leader in a room. And I just hear all these, I would say about five men 
talking in Swahili about something not good and I started to record it and I had no idea what they're saying I only know like five words in Swahili none of them which were used I they weren't talking about elephants I can tell you that much so long story short with it I um I interrupted them and I said gentlemen I don't know what your plans are I don't know what you're trying to do to us to me to to your own people by preventing us from helping them but I just recorded your conversation and I started to bluff because I had no internet connection and no service in that building and I told them that I had sent the video to authorities and that if they uh, had not released us within the next four hours on a plane to Uganda um, that they would be in big big trouble fortunately I um I have friends in Uganda from Jane Goodall's Institute to being the vet for the Ugandan Wildlife Authority and the Canines for Conservation. So I felt very happy about getting to Uganda and the welcome was completely the opposite. They're hugging us. They're embracing us. They're making sure we're okay and not traumatized. And I'm just thinking, wow, what a difference. If only I had my equipment, I could bolster out my trank gun and tranquilize these guys and run off and do what we need to do. But that's the adventure. And it's, it's those experiences that really can undermine what goes on in the wild when people restrict good work from happening. Authors, I have a fantastic new service to tell you about. It's called PubSite. PubSite is a service to help you build your very own website your home on the web where you can promote your work and give your fans a place to connect with you. PubSite is a website platform that allows every author, regardless of budget, to have a great looking professional website developed by the book marketing professionals at FSB Associates. PubSite is the new easy to use DIY website builder developed specifically for books and authors. Whether you're an author of one book or 20 or a small publisher, PubSite allows you to build, design, and most importantly, Update your website pain-free. No need to be dependent on a designer or webmaster to make a small but costly change to your website. Save the money and do it yourself. PubSite is the best platform for authors because it's a book-centric platform. PubSite was built just for authors and small publishers. Every design, feature, and layout is book-centric. They have customized designs for you to use. It's easy to build. No coding or HTML is necessary to create a stunning professional looking website with all the features you want get a custom domain name yourname.com it's simple to update you can add all of your books add a blog and a book tour sell from any retailer manage your email list and social media and even do e-commerce build your website with a 14-day free trial then pay just $19.99 per month which includes hosting and we offer packages starting at $499 to set up the website for you. Pub-site.com, the place to help authors find their home on the web. Are you looking for software that helps you bring your novel to life? Novelize is a web-based writing app which allows you to access your work on any device with a browser and an internet connection. Write from your desktop, laptop, tablet, or smartphone just get the novel written. Say goodbye to sticky notes. With our notebook on the side, you can keep track of all the important information you need to write your novel. We keep distractions to a minimum, help you track your progress, and encourage you to write more novels. You can even use the same notebook for your novels in a series. Outline, write, or organize your novel by switching between modes. You can write your outline notes while you're writing, and you can move scenes and chapters around anytime in the organized mode. Choose between the dark and light theme to help prevent eye strain so that you can stay immersed in your book. Novelize, the app for writers by writers. Well, it sounds like your interactions with the humans have been uh, at least as as crazy as some of the interactions with, with animals. That's, that's yeah. so wild. 
it's so it wild. is wild it is wild so yeah i get to work with such cool animals that have the most unique behaviors and anatomy and physiology and how we dart them and how we work with them and what we're fixing and their interactions with their animal families and groups and it's incredible but then once again we have to remember that animals and humans are interlinked and our world is one world and the UN has been really promoting a very important concept concept called the One Health Mantra. And it really ingrains in us how all areas of science, and I would argue, honestly, the world, each person is vital to protecting the global health of the planet. Right. So, Dr. Gabby, um, there's it's one thing to be a veterinarian and to work with uh, with all of the different animals that that you get to. And it's another to then take that work and use it as uh, as as an education tool that um, to promote the work that you do and to share the work with that you do with people like me who don't get the opportunity to, you know, go into the, the, uh, the bush and, and, and uh, interact with animals that, that I, you know, except for at a zoo, will probably never get to see in person. Um, so what, what was that, that transition for you from, uh, and and maybe um, not a transition, it's not like you, you stopped being a veterinarian, but what, what was that, that like for you to, to see the things that you see and then to say, this is something I need to share with the broader world. More people need to be aware of the, the, the world that they can't see. I would say that it was my own ignorance. When I was 21, I was accepted into vet school. And even though I had been working in the wildlife sphere for years, I was so uneducated and here I am, a, you know, a girl going to Cornell. I'm sorry to say that, but I was so uneducated as to what was really happening. And although there's fantastic journalism that does go into it, sometimes people aren't reading that. And you're not attracting the right demographic to get their ear to tell them this is a problem. You know, we, we start to listen to media and get drawn to what we want to hear. But sometimes we need to be listening to what we should be hearing and reading and book writing and other forms of media is magic. It's the opportunity to take you to a place or to educate you or to give you a feeling that there is more out there and to make you grow. And for me, it was when I recognized that, A, there are so many organizations doing great work. B, how do we make them work together? Because sometimes they're too territorial. Oh, I'm working in this region. You're working in the adjacent region. I'm not working with you. This is my stuff. Well, how do you collaborate? Because it's one planet and you're working with similar species. Can we, can we share this playground? So how do we get people to, to do that together? And that's what inspired me to say, let me find ways to educate and spread awareness. And through that, I actually started in a way that could unite all people. And I was actually in the fashion industry. I started doing campaigns with sustainable fashion. And I was actually writing a blog about wildlife. So writing, once again, was essential for me, telling people my journey, my adventures. And that's why people started calling me Gabby Wild. And, <laughs> and then through that, people said, you know what, can you write this for that? Can you share this about that? And I say, wow, this is so cool that people don't know this. And I've been blessed with the opportunity to see it firsthand, not just to have studied and read on it. So I then started working in that educational realm. And it genuinely fell into my lap to start working with Nat Geo Kids when they created a really cool online game called Animal Jam. And Animal Jam needed a wildlife educator. And they had a fabulous marine biologist on it. And they also had another conservationist. 
But they thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had the wildlife vet? So they created that character, which is me. And I started educating kids through blogs and videos, bringing them on some of the adventures. And then Nat Geo Kids Books said, this has been so successful and kids really seem to engage with this. Would you like to write a book? And I said, you need to ask twice. This would be so much fun to make a kid's book. And I've just enjoyed the entire authorship journey. Well, the the book is absolutely stunning. Uh, Wild Vet Adventure, Saving Animals Around the World with Dr. Gabby Wild. Um, I got it in the mail uh, from your publicist uh, two or three weeks ago. And um, our oldest daughter is actually um, about to uh, give birth to our to our very first grandchild. Uh, just oh, any day now. Yeah, she's she's at the doctor right now having her uh, thirty seven week uh, checkup, and and we're about to have a a grandbaby just any time now. Um, and I, I got that book and I took it over uh, to their house and it's it's sitting up in the in the nursery uh, where where the baby is going to come home. And because I can't wait to uh, to share this book with with our new granddaughter, it's it's such a it, 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 it's such a, a wonderful, wonderful book. It's almost 200 pages of uh, of just stunning uh, photos that that you come to expect from National Geographic. I mean, just the the production quality of this volume is just it's stunning. You know, just just like everything you expect from from this company. Um, when when you first started kicking around the idea for what this book would be, um, how did you how did you approach it? Like, what was your did you begin with kind of a big theme and then you know find ways to, you know ha- how can I illustrate this theme uh, with with this animal or this region or kind of how did you, uh, you know, wrap your brain around the whole project? And then, you know, what what was that process like of of finding segments that then would make sense and fit together? I approached it similarly to how I personally learned how to be a wildlife vet. And I learned by going breaking it down by phylogenetics, as crazy as that sounds, which means looking at it from a species perspective and learning about each of those different species. But that's way over kids' heads. So the first part was to teach them what is a vet? What do vets do? What does a wildlife vet do? How can you become one one day? Then the next step is let's learn about animals. But most kids think about animals in more of a generalized sense. And I wanted to be able to say, let's talk about it globally. And so let's jump about and learn about some of the creatures that are really cool in different continents. So that way a child in China who might get to read this book feels just as cool as a kid who's in South America because I'm talking about amazing animals that are in both locations. But what's extra cool is that you guys have animals on this phylogenetic tree that are similar to each other. So they might not even see the word phylogenetics in the book, but that's how I structured it. So that way we can make comparisons. So each continent, I take some of the cool animals that are there and I say, by the way, let's do a global comparison of them. So we'll look at the unique creatures from those regions, compare them to regions across the world and species that are similar. And then what I expressed to Nat Geo that is really important to me, besides me telling cool stories about these animals and how a vet would treat a penguin differently than a hawk or an eagle, what was important besides my little tidbits of information and stories is learning about people. I think it's so important to understand that humans have impacted animals and animals have impacted people. And I wanted them to learn the cultures behind these different regions of the world and gain a more literally global perspective. I, um, I get personally frustrated when someone says to me, oh, these evil poachers, I get it all the time on, on social media, these evil poachers, I could kill them all. And I think to myself, you poor person, You have no idea what that poacher is going through. Do you think that poacher woke up as a child one day and said, I want to go and kill elephants? No, no, they didn't. 
But unfortunately, there's a person who's willing to buy that tusk. And if you could stop that person from buying the tusk, then that person doesn't need to get a job poaching elephants. And right. there's, there's a bigger social conflict that I'm not even delving into on poaching within itself. Because there, there's multiple modalities of poaching and why people do it. But it's very rarely that the poacher is this insidious evil person. They're just trying to survive. And we have to figure out ways to protect that person so they don't feel the need to poach and give away money, get money through that. Also protect their farms to, if we're gonna talk about elephant human crises, I want people to understand that that poor farmer is dealing with an elephant that could kill him or his family and can destroy his farm. And if that elephant is encroaching on his land, he's scared and he needs to find a way to get rid of it. Just like if you had an elephant that was going to squash your house. Right. And you have to understand people's perspectives. It's not all black and white. And so a lot of my job requires mitigating these human animal conflicts. And so that's one reason why I thought it very important that we stop acting self-righteous and start with our children and teach them about other cultures so that way they can come across and re realize that there's another perspective and be open-minded to it. Don't let your brains fall out in your open-mindedness, but, but be open-minded to what others might be going through. Right. And, and a book like this helps to to break down those barriers by by seeing the the wildlife and the other occupants of the areas of the world. Um, it it does bring us closer in a way by by kind of breaking down some of the barriers of ignorance. And uh, it 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 does have a way of of making us feel closer by by understanding the world around us, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I think kids will walk away with this being really happy. I don't yeah. put anything in the book that should make them particularly sad or upset because I don't want kids to feel futile. If anything, they're the powerful ones and they can use that energy in a positive direction to make this place better and to inspire us to want to protect them them being the children and the animals. Right. Well, any book that is produced by National Geographic or, or Nat Geo Kids, you just know from the get-go that these are going to be some of the most stunning photographs that, that you've ever seen. Um, what was the process like for you? I, I I, I understand about the story that you wanted to tell and and then your personal stories that you sprinkled throughout the book. Um, but then how how did you pair these stories with uh, with all of the the great photos in the book? And um, how much interaction did you have on that front? I'm so blessed that sometimes I have photographer friends with me on my journey. And they will, you know, provide these photos to me and to the charity that I run. Um, it's through the charity that I've been able to find sponsorships and private donations to go help wildlife internationally. So if we have extra funding for some of the trips, I will bring a crew with us so that we can tell the story afterwards or during the adventures. So we use some of that videography and, and photography for it. Um, in some situations, we um, use some of the National Geographic photographers that have worked with those species that could then provide some of the, the better shots and angles of them. So it was a, a process of me, me selecting with them which species we were going to feature, what photos I had of those, and which ones were good enough for Nat Geo quality. It's, it's so good. It's such a uh, it, it's one of these books that you can um, with with a small child who doesn't read yet. Um, you know, she will get uh, all, so much enjoyment just looking at the pictures. And then as as they grow and mature and can understand more and more. Um, there's so much more of this book that they can absorb. Um, that's what I love about these types of books is that they can uh, they can become a favorite book of a child at an early age 
and stay with them through, uh, you know, as they mature and, and the book kind of grows with them. Uh, that it, was that a goal to, to, um, to have a book that became like a, like a, uh, like a best friend of the child that's just kind of always handy and on display in their room. Absolutely. And that way they can always go back to it, reread these adventures and grow with it a hundred percent. And this is uh, one of those books that absolutely will be a favorite uh, in, in every reader's house. I know. Um, Do you plan on, uh, you know, first off, how long did it take to, to produce this book from the idea to publication, how, how much time has gone into this? COVID did throw a monkey wrench into some of the timing, but sure. I would say about three years with COVID included. Once it erupted, so it was just very difficult for us to predict when to release it because of all the complications that happened. And we all were just very patient and assess the situation. But yeah, I would say it was it was a big process because it's not just the creative part and the structural writing part, but then it was all of these Nat Geo geniuses that then did the design and uh, book layout. So it was really an incredible team of people. Uh, Dr. Gabby, I know that if people are intrigued with your work on the book here, um, that they they probably want to follow along with you and and go on more adventures with you. Um, I know you have a fantastic website. Uh, where can people find you and what can they expect uh, from your website and your social media presence? Totally. So the website is GabbyWild.org and they'll find on the website some of the adventures Um, Of course, what the foundation is doing um, in in its core. If you want to look and find out current events and what we're doing, that mostly will be located on our social media. If you happen to need a a wildlife veterinarian and need to make a a request, that can be done through the online portal on the website. Um, But then on our social media like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, you you can find our recent current events and what we're trying to do. You can sign up for our newsletter on the website. And then for Instagram, our, our uh, username that you can look up is dr.gabbywild. And similarly for, for Facebook, Dr. Gabby Wild and on YouTube. And excitingly, we're going to release just a little mini episode on YouTube this month. So that way people can join us on the journey and really kind of feel what it's like to do what I do. Love it. Uh, Dr. Gabby, uh, thank you so much for taking time to come on the show today. We're going to send everyone uh, to pick up their copy of Wild Vet Adventures. We're going to put links to it in the show notes of this episode. This is a hardcover book that you must have in your home. I promise you will not uh you'll not regret it one moment uh dr gabby thank you so much for taking time to come on the show today we're going to put links to the book in the show notes and to your website and uh, send everyone to see you thank you so much and it was a pleasure being here authors if you're looking for a partner to help ensure that your book is the best it can possibly be look no farther than pico's house Crystal and her staff make a conscious effort to be critical, yet courteous. They also strive to make the business side of things run smoothly so that you can rest easy knowing that your manuscript is in capable hands. Whether you need beta reading, developmental editing, a manuscript critique, line editing, copy editing, or proofreading, Pico's House is the one-stop shop for you. Check them out today at picoshouse.com to get started. Dream Author by Sophie Hanna is an immersive 14-month coaching program for writers at any and every level of experience, and also for those of you who want to write and are just waiting for the right encouragement and guidance to get you started. Your writing dreams should make you happy. For so many of us, our dreams are not a source of happiness. Instead, they cause us stress, guilt, frustration, and even shame. Here's the great news. All of these feelings are natural and all writers experience them. The problem, though is that when your writing dreams bring you more anxiety than joy, it affects your resolve and your productivity, and you end up not taking the action you need 
to take in order to propel your dreams in the right direction so that they can stand a strong chance of coming true. That's why Sophie created the Dream Author Coaching Program to teach anyone who is passionate about writing how to change the way they build, think about, and pursue their writing dreams in order to become their own most powerful ally and advocate for the rest of their writing life. And more great news. Once you've learned that skill, it lasts forever. Visit dreamauthorcoaching.com to get started today. The Bad Company Complete Series Omnibus, books one through seven. Humanity's greatest export, justice. Space is a dangerous place, even for the wary, especially for the unprepared. The aliens have no idea. Here comes the Bad Company. The Bad Company, book one, Colonel Terry Henry Walton takes his warriors into battle for a price in this first installment of The Bad Company. He believes in the moral high ground and is happy to get paid for his role in securing it. Set in the Cutharian Gambit universe, Terry, Char, and their people humans, werewolves, were-tigers, and vampires form the core of the Bad Company's direct action branch, a private conflict solution enterprise. Join them as they fight their way across Tissakinan 4, where none of the warring parties were what they expected. The seven-book series Omnibus includes The Bad Company, Blockade, Price of Freedom, Liberation, Destroyer, Discovery, Overwhelming Force. Grab the complete Bad Company series by Craig Martell now. How to Be a Badass Witch by Michael Anderley. Virtutus Gloria Mercis. Translation, glory is the reward of valor. Fed up with playing the normal game, recent university graduate, ex cum laude, ex soccer star, ex popular and mostly broke Cara Madonna changes her life when she decides to research how to be a witch and believes it. Cara didn't want to go back east and deal with her overbearing mom, so when university was done, she stayed behind in Los Angeles. Little did she realize how controlling moms can be from the other side of the country. Feeling a little desperate to make her own way, she buys a few books on business and one on a lark, How to Be a Badass Witch. That's when the trouble started. Find out just what trouble a young woman can get into when the magic just might be real. How to Be a Badass Witch by Michael Andrews. 